Next up, we have a video news package from Mrs. Eshelman's broadcast journalism class focusing on the issue of climate change. And we got a chance to speak to one of the members of this group, Luke McCarthy, and he had this to say on the group's project. Climate change has become a global issue that is talked about every day. How has it affected Burlington as a community and what can we do to combat it? First, Ms. Graham spoke about the local impacts of climate change. One of the big things um, that's probably most noticeable for people living around here is a change in our weather patterns. So we're getting um, more storms where we are getting a lot of precipitation from one event. And I think some of the storms you know, over this past weekend or even if you think over the summer, people can definitely remember some of those big storms that they've had. Um, another good one, living on the coast. If you look at uh, Boston area right on the coastline, those coastlines and sea levels are definitely starting to change. And once again, when we get those big storms, a lot of areas in Boston are starting to flood. Mrs. Graham then spoke about how environmental science is related to climate change. She spoke about how she incorporates climate change into her curriculum. I think if anything, it's made my subject more important. Um, I think one of the really cool things about environmental science is if I wanted to, I could probably teach it all with what's happening in the news on that any given day. You know, there's always stuff about the environment or climate change on, um, on the news. So I think if anything, it's, it's made students realize how important this class is and it's probably increased the numbers of students who've decided to take my class. So, you know, when I teach, I really try and explain the science behind climate change so that people leave having a really firm understanding of what that means. Earlier this year, Burlington banned plastic bags from being used in stores as an effort to reduce the amount of plastic that is used. Well, I mean, we already got the plastic bag thing that's annoying me, because then we have to carry those paper bags from Wegmans, you know what I'm talking about, that don't have handles. It hurts. Sam Norman spoke about how he thinks that paper bags and solar panels are a good solution to climate change. He also spoke about the shift in schools' use of paper and technology. Using paper bags instead of plastic, which reduces companies from producing as much plastic, causing less pollution. Um, because paper bags are recyclable, so you don't have to produce a new one each time. It can be recycled in a new paper. And also, um, if more people decide to have solar panels on their roofs, then that would help greatly by reducing the amount of coal used. Finally, Mrs. Graham spoke about what people can do in an effort to combat climate change. I think one of the biggest things we need to do is start looking at our actions that uh, utilize fossil fuels. So things like driving cars is probably one of the biggest things that we can do. So carpooling whenever you can, taking the bus to and from school is a great way to reduce your carbon impact and carbon footprint. Um, you know, I know we're not really buying cars as teenagers, but when you do buy a car, if you can get an electric car, or a more fuel efficient car, that's another great way. Taking your bike, walking when you can, anything that's gonna lessen um, you know, driving in a car. And then uh, smaller things, um, when you're not in the room, turn off the lights, have fuel efficient light bulbs at home. All of those things, you know, small impacts can add together to make a greater impact. Ultimately, we still have time to try to lessen the impact of climate change. One way to start is by making efforts as a community to help combat climate change. Some of these efforts include educating people about climate change, recycling products such as paper and plastic, and reducing the amount of fossil fuels emitted by cars and factories. And we are here with Luke McCarthy from the journalism class. Hi Luke, how are you doing? Hello. I'm, I'm doing good. That's you? good, that's good, I'm good. Uh, so we got some questions for you here. All right. The first question is, what inspired you to tackle the topic in your video? Um, we were handed a list of different topics we could choose from. Um, some, of, some of them were certainly more out there, like uh, wind turbines. Wind turbines, okay. That, yeah. that was an option. Well, alas, we did not choose it. <laughs> choose it. Um, we ended up picking climate change because it's obviously a very current issue. Sure. You've seen uh, Greta Thunberg. Yep, and all times of that. person of the year. Times person of the year, indeed. Um, she came over here on a sailboat, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Good for cool. her. Um, so yeah, we, it was a very current issue, and we decided, hey, well, let's do something that's pretty relevant and people are interested about, unlike wind turbines, which I'm sure are great renewable <laughs> sources. Of well, energy. yeah, that's a little that's that's a subset of uh, climate change. It is, yeah. but uh, interest in wind turbines run a little low that's here true, at the moment. True.
All right. Uh, what did you learn uh, about broadcast from producing your video? Ah, um, I actually knew a little bit about uh, broadcast going into um, okay. journalism because sure. I have learned some stuff from here, and then I am going to school to major in broadcast. Oh, so you might know a thing or two. Yeah, so I knew a little bit. Well, um, what did your What did your group learn then? What was, uh, what was some overall? Um, experiences that you had that you know enlightened some kids definitely getting enough b-roll okay. um, to fill kind of like blank gaps in narration because truly b-roll is all nearly the core of yeah, very nearly the core of video because you can have an interview but human attention span just kind of um, they'll tendency to wander off if something goes on for too long so it's nice to have the changes and um, the other big thing we learned is levels of audio yeah um, that's important you one. get yeah you gotta make sure they all match up because otherwise one minute's really quiet and then the next minute's blaring loud which I remember when our videos were actually played back in class there was a sound effect played in someone's video and it was like very blasting and our teacher was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> so that, that was a little funny to watch, but it was sure. definitely the reminder of balance the audio. Yeah, definitely. And our last question here, or not really a question, but I would like you to tell us how you applied what you learned from your broadcast experience to the video. Um, again, back to audio leveling, mm -hmm. making sure everything is all nice and neat in terms of audio because the last thing you want is something that's going to deafen people and then instantly switch to oh i can't hear it at all mm -hmm. um camera angles that was definitely another one you don't want to have like constantly switching between all different angles the sure. rule of 180 that was also talked upon but i think we didn't use it as much because we didn't switch from yeah interview to like, interviewee yeah, yeah. So th those were two things that I probably will be applying very, very soon. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. It was great to talk about climate change. It is a big issue at this point. It is. Um, and we are going to go back to everyone here in the studio. We'll see you there. All right. Well, thank you, Luke, for that interview. But now we have some members of the Student Council here with us today. Uh, I would, can you introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what roles you have in the Student Council? Uh, I am Colby Walzer. I am the Executive Board President of Student Council. And I'm Colin Wynn, and I am the Executive Board Secretary. All right, sounds good. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a chat about a couple things here. Um, our first topic of the day is um, college applications. So for a lot of people, college applications are finally over, uh, which means that the struggle process that is we were put through um, is fresh in the minds of a lot of people. Uh, as students just start to dig into their studies at the beginning of their final year of high school, we're hit with a wave of responsibilities and decisions that will affect the rest of our lives. This is a daunting process for many as they are trying to impress the colleges, keep up their grades in school, balance the social life, sports, and other personal activities. We're here to talk about that today. Um, so are college applications too time consuming nowadays for the average high school senior? I, for me? No, maybe for other people, but I, I, think, I think if you want to go to a college that the process can be worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to comment on if the system's fair, but... Uh, well, sure you can if you, if you don't think it's fair. I don't think I mean, it's fair. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that if you want to get into a college, it's, I think the process is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think, so me personally, I haven't finished most of my common apps. I'm going to be applying regular decision for my schools. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working through the process now. And I, it's, I think the only difficult part may be the supplements. I think thanks to the common app, yeah. everything's there for you. You just fill it out one time. And then special schools or specific schools, you got to do more work. But it's not like, it's not like you're going to have to spend an entire week dedicated to it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I feel, I feel like it is manageable. I think that throughout the entire process, I've been confused of what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, yeah, yeah. like I'm, I, I am capable and willing to do the work to get everything done, but I think that um, I don't know what I need to do most mm -hmm. of the time. I think I'm close now, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think that it's a little, there should be 
a little more of an outline about like this, this, and this kind of thing would be super helpful for me at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As the only junior in the room who hasn't applied to college yet and won't <laughs> for another like year, mm -hmm. I mean, I see all my friends who are seniors and like mm -hmm. you guys are all like, stressed me on and even after you apply like it's the stress of like am I going to get in somewhere yeah. mm -hmm. and like that first college you get in that relief you feel but like it might not be your dream college so like then you have like the weeks and weeks of waiting of just like do I get in am I going to a place I want to be for the rest of my life am I doing what I want to be and I'm terrified for next year yeah. like I'm already stressed like I, my mom is already like oh have you looked at this college have you looked at these programs like what do you want to do and it's even from like freshman year, I was scared. I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel stressed, not all the time with the process, but mm -hmm. I feel sp stress um, usually in like what errors I make yeah. rather than what yeah. comes from the process itself. Cause I know there were like, I want to say like two times so far where I just forgot a deadline was like the day after mm -hmm. and I just had to like pound through it and I was just like this is I don't like this <laughs> I don't, this is not fun yeah does anyone yeah. want to write all those essays yeah. though it, it definitely like, could be a little simpler I feel like or like it depends like not like obviously they look at your grades and stuff but then they also like look at the essays to determine if you get in so there's that stress like if you're not a good writer like mm -hmm. you have to bang out that essay that's like perfect it's got mm -hmm. good grammar and it's interesting and like all this stuff and like if you're not good at writing that's like really hard and then it's like all it depends on so like you're like what you mentioned about the essays I think is really interesting because for Colby and I we're both in the same English class and our teacher Miss Belarzik First assignment was really to do the college essay. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know yeah. that is a thing, uh -huh. but like yeah. even for like the supplemental essays. And mm. Yeah, that's different. Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. the college essay, like the the main one that you have to write. I feel like in general would be like really hard because like you want to make it perfect and you want to show your personality through it and all this stuff. But like you you have a limited amount of space and like you gotta make every mm -hmm. word count. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think one of the Good thing is like Ethan, you you also had an English teacher to go over your yeah. college essay. I think that's one of the, you know, one of the easier but mo more effective ways of making sure that gets done, you know, by forcing it through the schoolwork. You also happen to have it done for college. Like I had it done September, and I haven't actually put it into the Common App until like this week. Mm -hmm. So it's just been there. I've been I'm it's thankful. So yeah, that's how I started though. Is I. I was mm. like, I have to apply to college. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm like, I've heard people talk about the Common App. So I just mm. Googled Common App and I started filling stuff out. Yeah. That's how little I knew. I just started putting stuff in. I don't know. Okay, and our next topic is all about bricks and mortar. Of course, I'm talking about stores with exclusively physical locations losing too much money to online retailers. Stores are facing bankruptcy because of this, and some, such as Toys R Us and Sears, are already gone due to this. Lots of people, such as myself, find it much easier to shop online than drive to a store and buy something, but that's what's fueling this widespread shutdown of physical retail stores. So we're asking, are online stores going to wipe out physical ones, and do we care? Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure, they're gonna, eventually, eventually yeah. everything not everything though. I can imagine restaurants still being up. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, yes. but like you know, a store like uh, Walmart, mm -hmm. um, yeah. that's very replaceable. I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, why would somebody put in the effort to actually go there when they could just beep 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 click? Yeah. Or, yeah. I, that, that's a sound is, effect. Is that how Amazon door works? Door opening. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yes. I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. I feel like even now I use Amazon for like most of my things. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I would occasionally go to the mall and like if I need mm -hmm. something, it's like, oh, Amazon. My grandmother is Amazon Prime, so we just like hop on her account and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be here in two to three days. Perfect. Yeah. It'll be here when we need it. So Especially with yeah. us living so close to Boston mm -hmm. where they have a warehouse there, like a one of their major warehouses, mm -hmm. it's so easy to order stuff and yeah. get it like the next day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like even if you have to wait one day, it's better than like having to take up your own time to go to the store and figure it out. And then most of the time, they don't have it at the store or anywhere near you. You can just get it from Amazon because they have everything. So that's yeah. that's why I find it easier. Yeah. I think yeah. It, it, for me though, I, I'm not a big shopper mm -hmm. as it is. So online shopping has never been a big thing for me. But I I I think it's very convenient. I think it's great. But 
when I do go shopping, I do prefer to like, whether it be food or clothing or anything else, I like to see it in person, you know, because people, they lie sometimes on the <laughs> internet. So I like to see it in stores, but I think uh, physical stores, unfortunately, will be replaced eventually, and it's a little bit sad, but. I think stores for sure that sell clothes are the main. Yeah, I think they'll be more prominent. Mm. Like yeah. they'll go away later because like, I feel right. like there would need to be like a specific way to find measurements. Yeah, right. Okay. And our next discussion comes from the Broadcast Journalism Project once again. And sadly, this group cannot make it tonight, but we do have a video to show from them here. So let's hear what they have to say about sleep deprivation in teenagers. Sleep, something that everyone needs, but few people get enough of. Many students in BHS aren't getting enough sleep in a day, which can have an effect on their health, stress levels, and performance in school. The average teen gets only about seven hours of sleep a night, which is so little compared to the average of nine hours of sleep that they should be getting. The information on a chart is provided by the CDC. At BHS, school now gets out about an hour later than years prior. While the time change was intended to help students get more sleep, it can be a challenge for students to balance out their schoolwork and activities. Vishwa Patel, a senior at BHS, is able to balance school and sleep, but is understanding of the struggles some students have. I do one club. I am the vice president of Arbor Club, and we meet like once every two weeks, like an hour. I go home after school at like 3 30. I don't really mind it because it doesn't really affect me, but I know that it affects other people. They do sports, they go practice, they have games, they have a life outside of school, and they have to do homework. While students like Bishwa can get a good amount of sleep, others struggle with maintaining a good night's rest because their time is crammed with schoolwork and sports. In the winter, hockey is sometimes before school, and then golf is after school. How do you feel about the new start time? We get out of school time, out of school later, and then there's less time to do homework after sports. For our last interview, we sat down with a BHS nurse to get a medical perspective on the importance of sleep for teens. Most teenagers do not get eight, okay. eight hours, but that's what you should get. But I do think that kids are probably staying up a little bit later because of the sports being later, out, uh, you know, extracurricular activities starting later, so homework gets done later. When you are exhausted, you basically mm -hmm. can't think straight, and yeah. it just kind of ruins your whole day. Just trying so hard to just maintain, you know, focus, and if you get a good night's sleep, you definitely feel better, I think. Students feel the impact of sleep, too. I'm more tired during school and get less sleep. I think I do better in school and have a good night of sleep. Sleep is incredibly important for memory formation, physical well-being, and mental health. Without a good night's sleep, students are not only at a disadvantage in the classroom, but are also more likely to get sick and feel more stressed. We want to ask our student council members here what their thoughts are on getting on the lack of sleep teens are getting and what BHS students can do about it right here and right now. I don't think much can be done about students sleeping or mm -hmm. not sleeping. Um, I think that no matter what, kids are just not going to sleep. Like, um, I know for me with the schedule change, uh, <clears throat> I set a bedtime for myself at 10. I just oh, moved I that back. Too, yeah. Yeah. I moved it back mm -hmm. an hour. Like, I don't I know. I that notification on my phone where it's like, turn off all your apps mm -hmm. and stuff, but you can bypass it. So it's like, mine's at like 10.30, but <laughs> normally I'm still up until like 10.45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10.45, ooh. <laughs> I'm a little later than that usually. Um, <laughs> no, but I think uh, that, so a lot of people are like, oh, but you know, I just stay up later now that I have more time in the morning. Well, and so I think the 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 reason for that is that it's the same amount of sleep, but it's in more of the correct part of the day that you want it in, right? If you sleep until, if you wake up when it's dark out, that'll mess you up for the rest of the day, right? right? right. If you wake up more naturally when it's light out, it'll actually help you. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that, I don't, I don't think anyone goes to sleep at the right time because yeah. everyone's tired all the time. Yeah. Also, like the sleep deprivation thing, like I feel like a lot of kids, like there are some kids that like have to stay up that late because they like are doing things that are necessary, but like procrastination is also a factor. Like a lot of people just like do everything in the last minute yeah. and like they could sit there for hours on their phone before even starting their homework. Like literally, I'm pretty sure some people start their homework when I go to bed and like I normally get a pretty good amount yeah. of yep. sleep, 
but like I know other people don't because like uh-huh. they start their homework again at like 10 p.m. and yeah. then they're up until like 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. trying to do their home, finish their that homework. That's really nice. <laughs> I, I do a lot of my homework in school, and then I do a lot of it. I do a lot of it when I get home, but like. And, th- and I've tried to get myself to do that, to get to sleep earlier. But the thing is, I, it, as it gets later, I get more motivated to do stuff. Right? When yeah. I come home from school, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done for today. Yeah. And then it's like 10 p.m. And I'm like, man, I don't want to sleep. <laughs> I want to get all this stuff done. So, yeah, I think it's an issue. And there was for this sure. one day where I took the free CT, mm-hmm. which is like ah. hard. And then I had something that Sunday. So this was like a Saturday. And I had something that night. So I had to do my homework in like the two hours uh, after yeah. the pre ACT. And I was sitting there and I was like, I can't uh, do this. I can't focus on my homework right after school, <laughs> right after I just did this. Yeah. And so I feel like that's a factor that people don't want to do their homework right after school. Obviously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then they do it later at night and that leads to not enough yeah. sleep. Yeah, everything else. So. so as we all know, the year is 2019, and gone are the days of being able to keep up with all of your favorite shows with just a Netflix subscription and a cable box. Oh, yeah. Now, as of recently, there are so many different options for streaming that if you want to watch a show, chances are you better put down another $12 a month to watch that one show. This is becoming a dilemma for many entertainment consumers as they are having a harder time deciding exactly what matters most to them and what they can pass by and save some cash on. So we're here to talk with all of, about all of the new streaming options and what we think our favorites are. Um, but I can definitely see the, um, the want or the need to have these services, like all these Baby Yoda memes everywhere. Like sometimes, I just got Disney Plus. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, really sometimes good. I see, I'm like, man, these are so funny. I really want to watch this show now, mm-hmm. but I don't have the money. So. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so, so for me, we just, we just got a family subscription, and uh, so you yeah. can have multiple accounts on there, just like Netflix does. Um, and so, and we got it because we wanted to watch Mandalorian, right? Uh, That's the big thing. But um, I, we got it, and I was looking around, and you can watch every Star Wars movie that was ever put out wow. on there. You can watch mm-hmm. You can watch Endgame. I don't know where else you can watch Endgame. <laughs> you can buy it on YouTube, <laughs> but you can watch Endgame on Disney Plus now, um, which is like, that's a selling point in itself. Um, yeah. But so there's a lot of things on there that are just like, you can't find anywhere else. Like I feel like I'm browsing Netflix a lot of times and I'm like, oh, I wonder if Netflix has this. No, I wonder if Netflix has this. No, and it's things like Endgame and the Star Wars movies, popular mm-hmm. movies, that are actually on things like Disney Plus. My family just kind of like hitchhiked onto my grandparents' Netflix account. Mm-hmm. So like we don't really pay for it. I think we pay them like a little bit. <laughs> but we don't really pay anything. And then I got my Hulu subscription with my Spotify account because yeah. I really yeah. wanted Spotify Premium. That's something I like listening to music. So uh, I just wanted to be able to listen to music without ads. So that was sort of worth it for me. Like Hulu was just like an extra thing. But I right. found that I do like some of the shows that are on Hulu that like I couldn't find on Netflix. Like I watch Bones. I love Bones. It's all on Hulu, but it's not on Netflix. Mm. So like you gotta balance it though. But then some are on both of them, so you're like, which do I watch? There's not a lot of overlap though. Yeah, there's for nice. for contract Why? reasons. Yeah. yeah. But like, and then I also want Disney Plus. <laughs> so I want all <laughs> this those is the shows. dilemma. This is what we're here it's to talk so about. It's so hard. Uh, oh. Yeah. But I don't think I could get rid of any of them because like Netflix has Criminal Minds. I love Criminal Minds. <laughs> I don't think I could ever give up Criminal Minds. So. That is Criminal Minds, but then Hulu has Bones, and it just comes with it anyway. So I feel like I would have Hulu anyway, but then I really want Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. Which one is Gordon Ramsay on? Do you know if they like? I have no. There's too many. There's there's too many to keep track of now. That's the issue. Yes. I don't know why that popped into my head. Yeah. I don't know. I'm that's probably Netflix. That feels like that's that's his home. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. All right. Now, as students in high school get older, they need a job, and they have hobbies they enjoy and other important life responsibilities. However, a lot of this time is taken up by school and school-related activities, so many students are excited to go home and be able to work on other important things when they are hit by time-consuming homework and studying, which blocks them from doing other things they want or have to. We're here questioning if there should be a limit on how much a teacher can give out a night. Whoever wrote that question is very biased. (laughs) Yeah, that's very biased. So I should not go first, then. Um... No, I think it depends on like what teacher you have and what class you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, we're both in AP literature and composition. 
Would you say the workload is fine? I think it's fine. I think it's, yeah, I think it's manageable. I think it's a healthy amount. It's not like she doesn't give any homework, but it's not like she overdoes it. You know, yeah. It's like placed in such good spots over the course of the week or two weeks. It's like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. So. Like, I'm in AP chemistry and like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she, Ew. I literally think I have homework every single night. Mm, that's but nice. at the same time, she will give you the plan like two weeks in advance. Mm. Like she posted on there so you know what you have, what day, and you know like how much you're going to have so you can look at it. So like I think I do pretty well at planning. Like I do a mm. lot. Like if I, Wednesday is my lab day. So I normally do like my entire lab on the weekend when I have mm. maybe a little bit more time than I do on the weekdays. Mm. So I have the weekdays for like my homework assignments but there's a, yeah, I get a lot of homework yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think um, that plan that you were talking about if the teachers put it out there I think that's really helpful I know I know um the three of us have the same calc teacher yeah the yes. same class and sometimes we don't even know what we're doing the like, night of yeah yeah, yeah. we don't know there's if, another class that I have like that too yeah so yeah. like I think the plan is a good idea um, and like knowing what you have is always great yeah, yeah. Um, as long as you actually like check and do it mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, but I think also going back to how it relates to jobs and sports and like everything else that you want to do as a teenager, I think you know there's always going to be overlap between what what teachers give out and you got to pick pick what you want the most. You got to pick what you want the most, and if it's school, then you got to focus on school and you got to leave everything else. So. Yeah. Yeah.